Hey everyone and welcome to Cooking Companion TV. I'm Jenna Edwards and this is a recipe demo of spaghetti squash carbonara. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and let's get right to it. I tried to stay true to the carbonara ways, but there is a little bit of an adjustment with the spaghetti squash. P.S. This is very not vegetarian. Let's first tackle how to roast spaghetti squash. There's a lot of instructions out there already and they all work. So here's another one that I found pretty easy. Rather than struggling with slicing the squash in half while it's raw, which is always a fight and I always feel like it's really dangerous, I decided to start roasting it whole first so it would soften. At 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 Celsius, I placed the entire squash on a roasting pan and I left it in the oven for 15 minutes. I carefully removed the pan, carefully because they will roll around, and then I sliced them in half. Most instructions will tell you to slice the squash lengthwise, but I read somewhere on that vast internet where slicing it widthwise gets you the longest strands of squash. So I thought I'd try that today. I can't say it made a difference, but I ended up with these cute little bowls that I considered serving it in. Of course, we need to remove the seeds, which was also fairly easy this way. And I drizzled olive oil on the insides and sprinkled a little salt for flavor. You'll also notice how small my squash are. I thought using smaller squash would be easier to handle than like one giant one. Again, just for that whole like cutting something round thing. The difference between roasting the squash whole versus roasting it halved or opened squash is a flavor preference. When the inside of the squash is exposed to the oven, it can start to brown, which gives a deeper flavor. When you roast whole squash, it just steams inside of itself and no flavor can penetrate the meat. If you decide to leave them whole, you'll need to stab some holes around the squash so that the steam can release. And this helps you to avoid an exploding squash in your oven. That's why I originally removed them from the oven. It would be easier to make the holes when it was a little bit soft. And once I started making the holes, I realized I could just go ahead and cut it like in half. So. I did because I wanted the more the more flavor, that roasted brown flavor. Alrighty, open squash goes back into the oven for another 30 minutes. You can prep your carbonara ingredients, but there's really not much to do uh, right until you start cooking. You need two eggs and at least six tablespoons of grated Parmesan and or Pecorino cheese. I messed up and I only did three tablespoons of cheese and I regret it. You'll whisk together the whole eggs and the grated cheese with some cracks of fresh ground pepper, we're trying to make like a custard. Once the squash are out of the oven, we'll start the cooking process. Over medium heat, pour in a couple tablespoons of oil and four ounces of diced pancetta or guanciale or even bacon, and let it crisp up the pork and the oil with some healthy cracks of black pepper for five to six minutes. We really need the oil to get flavored and for the fat to render. Once it's crisp, push it to the side of the pan and lower the heat to low. Now you wanna be using a pan that can hold heat. So cast iron is really great for this type of dish. If we were using pasta, we'd pour in a little pasta water at this point, but we don't have that. So I'm using a couple tablespoons of chicken stock uh, with a couple extra tablespoons of water. This can pick up any browned bits on the bottom of the pan. And again, it creates a carrier for that pork pancetta bacon flavor. Now let's shred our squash nests. I can't say that this method gave me longer strands. I probably should have run the fork along the inside rather than using it to scoop out the big chunks. Maybe next time. And now it gets a little tricky. With regular pasta, we'd vigorously toss the pasta with the water and the egg and cheese mixture to create an emulsion that coats the pasta. And that's what gives it that creamy look without cream. But with the squash, we don't want to break up the strands in the process. So all we can do is gently stir in the egg and the cheese custard uh, to try to mix in the pancetta bits. bits. It looks thin and watery. And some of this is because I poured in extra water, which turns out was not necessary. And then because I didn't use enough cheese with the egg, that's why it also looks thin. It also could be too much squash for the mixture. Now I am definitely going to make this again and I will play around with more ratios to get something thick and creamy and I'll give an update in the comments below. But using half a squash or doubling the egg and cheese should do just fine. Regardless, the flavor combinations were pretty stellar. The squash is sweet, which worked well with the crispy pancetta and the cheese and the pepper. 
To plate this in a long swirl, take chopsticks separated with a rolled up paper towel secured with a rubber band on each end of the paper towel roll. Then start stabbing around and twisting, using the tongs to guide the squash strands around the chopsticks. It's not perfect, but it gets you somewhere and it's not just this messy pile. Then top the swirl log with more sauce and cheese and black pepper. Get the ingredients below or at cookingcompaniontv.com slash squash carbonara. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to this channel for more demos just like this. I'm Jenna Edwards. Thanks for watching.